this is Jean's grandson, Graham, <laughs> who's here really is that girly. <laughs> I don't know, my images of Russia are just really intricate color. I think of their churches, the Russian Orthodox Church, and how it's the spires and everything. I imagine that their embroidery will be real colorful. When you see the folk art pictures of their scarves and things like that, and their dresses, all kinds of neat different patterns, I think it'll be something like that. How is it that it came about, this Soviet American quilt that's being worked on right now? Because this is really the third one that's involved with the Soviets. It was funny. My mother sent um, quilt postcards to a friend of hers who lives in rural Pennsylvania. She's a court uh, stenographer, has been for many years. And she wrote back to me and said, you know, I really think that they ought to hang one of your peace quilts behind the arms negotiators in Geneva. And then she said, no, I think they should hang one in front of the arms negotiators <laughs> in Geneva. And I said, I said that story to everybody who was gathered for a meeting one Sunday morning. And there was a little pause. And then all of a sudden, everybody goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> we said, we'll do it. We'll do it. And we've done it. It's the way we've carried with every project that we've done. Oh, but with every. We have these wonderful ideas, and then suddenly we go, oh my, what have we decided we're going to do? Right? And the thing that makes it so amazing is then we go do it. How do you do? I'm Heidi from Idaho. I'm Jill from Birmingham. Nice to meet you. A British group called Mothers for Peace invited the Boise Peace Quilt Project and also delegates from the Soviet Women's Committee to join them in Britain for a gathering of Soviet American and British mothers. And we thought this was a perfect opportunity to bring the various portions of the quilt top together. And I think this comes back to what I've been feeling since I met you this morning and you unfolded that quilt because I must say that I, I had thought it was a lovely idea and sort of, you know, a sort of nice creative idea and I wasn't, sh I'm sure now that I haven't seen the implications of it and I think the whole point is that it's demonstrating a cooperative way of dealing with one another. I think one of the problems we seem to have got ourselves into is seeing conflict equals war and conflict is bad we haven't actually learned to deal with conflict and war has nothing to do with dealing with conflict it's the failure to deal with conflict that causes war mm. it has to do with everyone being a connected part of the same yes. organism yes, yes, and when yes. one part has success then we all succeed I think that's the female way of yes. looking at things yes. versus the male yes. um, the only way to gain power is yes. to um, Vanquish another. And the papers mm. tell us the who drive. our enemy is. I mean, when I was a young woman, I had yes. to hate Germans. Now I can love Germans and I'm going to hate Russians. I mean, they're crazy. I think it's also very easy for us in Europe, and I know I catch myself doing it and I don't like it. I begin to feel very angry with America, specifically mm. with Reagan, I have yes. to add. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I remind myself when I meet Americans. This is absolutely insane. I can feel angry with their policies, no. but for goodness sake, let it stop there. Um, so I think, I think what we just have to question is the whole notion of enemies. Mm. Why enemies? Not who's the enemy, but why? Oh, oh, like oh, yes, yes, there are lots of needles down in the middle. Look. Is there any more blue needle. thread? Oh, that's your yes. needle, sorry. Oh. So what we have next to do is sew the bottom row of squares. And when we meet with the Soviet women, they have done a center panel. We don't know what will be on it, or what color it will be, or what style of uh, decoration or what form. So we'll come together and stitch the world together. <laughs> we met the Soviet women on the Isle of Wight. Marina was a photojournalist for the Soviet Women's Committee, the mother of a teenage son and a young daughter. Kenish Khan had come all the way from Kyrgyzia on the Chinese border, mother of five and grandmother of four. Marina. 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 Marina.
За мирное и счастливое будущее для всех детей. This is in English for peaceful, yes, and secure future for children all over the world. women of different countries uh, could create such beautiful quilt, you know, so we can, um, can create a beautiful world, the real world. It is possible, you know, because... If all the people, you know, will understand the ideas of the peace and of the world as it is understandable by the mothers. That that children and people all over the world need only peace, only peace. I was real impressed with what was going on, and but that seems so stark. Mm -hmm. But it's been helped now. But uh, when, and seeing it, in per, you know, getting to see it now, it's good. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I was really disappointed at first. I felt like we had spent so many hours yeah. on this hand hand doing it, and the other was so different. But I think but you it know, it's, a, it's a reflection of our different culture. Oh, when I saw it, I thought it is so Russian. Really? I mean, it is. It reflects their clothing, particularly Ukrainian. So I just thought it was. It was, it was exactly what, what I expected. It wasn't just at all what I expected. Really? Funny, yeah. But I know we're such elitists because if it isn't hand done, you know it's <laughs> Heidi. When you were there and you were talking with the Russian women, what did what was their reaction? What did they say about the possibilities of going to present these to the arms negotiators? It Did was they really interesting because um, it changed a lot from the first day to the last day that we were together. The first day, hmm, we just met each other, and you know, suddenly by circumstance, we were uh, plunged into discussing uh, what might happen to this quilt. Значит, выражает волю нашу нашего народа, а вот то, что преподнести, это подарить вот это переговору, это глава государств. Мне кажется, это безмысленно. Kinishkan says that uh, she thinks, you know, maybe it won't be very useful, you know, or maybe uh, even there is no sense to present it to uh, uh, the leaders that the Geneva talks. 
our people do their best for strengthening a peace all over the world. You know, there is no sense to appeal to them and ask them about peace. They express our feelings already. Maybe it will be more useful and it will make our quilt more popular and to have more public, uh, uh, I don't know the word. Appeal? Any, yes, appeal. Appeal, you know, if we present it to the United Nations. Basically, they felt that, of course, their negotiators um, are their representatives. They want peace very much as demonstrated by their efforts in the last 30 years. It would be insulting to suggest by the presentation of this quilt that they don't. And uh -huh. it would be a waste of time to present it to the Americans because they wouldn't pay any attention to it. <laughs> and this is what and I felt <laughs> really depressed and thought, oh, now what am I going to do? We truly do not mm -hmm. see the presentation of this quilt as a rebuke mm -hmm. to the negotiators of either side. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to communicate with them on a personal level, mm -hmm. communicate our support and our strong conviction about mm -hmm. the reasons we have for working together. Mm -hmm. What harm would it do if it, if it were presented uh, on tempor temporary basis to perhaps hang in the uh, Perhaps Geneva. by the UN, if we were to make a presentation to the UN, mm -hmm. and perhaps then... Mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. And Kineshkan suppose that this is a very good idea. And then perhaps with the UN it as a vehicle, we could have it hung with the negotiators, perhaps, from the UN. I don't know. Does that seem silly? I don't know, you know. Because again, the United Nations, you know, United Nations again appeal to the participants of the, of the talks, you know, but from my point of view, we are public again, you know. So the idea is just maybe to put it at the headquarters of the United Nations in order to give people, uh, as much people as possible to see it to see, to know the idea, you know. For example, as uh, boys' uh, quilts, you know, were put in our museum at the Friendship Society, and you can't imagine how many people write to our committee, mm -hmm. you know, because they now know uh, how American women are active uh, for peace. They know now about the families of these people, they write to each other, and so on and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. But you don't but see let's, the let's, negotiators let's, let's as... Discuss. Let's discuss. Yes, let's discuss. Let's discuss let's with the women, at least, you know. The way it ended was me sending a written proposal on all your behalfs, I should tell you what you proposed, that we have a joint delegation of Soviet, American, um, and British women, since the Mothers for Peace have been so instrumental in helping us make this happen, um, to go to Geneva. And then together we arranged for it to hang in the uh, negotiating halls. I felt hopeful that we would be able to work something out. And, and increasingly I felt the, that a large part of the value um, was the process of working something out, whatever it is we work out. I think that that's what we have to keep doing is listening to what the people that we're working with are saying and trying to see things from their perspective and understand it and then act on it so that it not only is a joint stitchery but a joint philosophical venture too. One request is that it hangs in the negotiation halls where the Soviets and the Americans are. Right. Number two request, if that's not possible, is that a Soviet negotiator will see, we'll see it. it. And the third is Thursday to have a group of Soviet officials receive we, us. So are we going to take the quote with us today? Yes, I Good. think we should, think that, definitely. So they can sort of allay their fears and Absolutely. knock them off their feet. Definitely.
it's a quilt. It's a nine by nine quilt, and would like him to stand in front of it, sort of give our talk in front of it. Okay. Would you like to put it on the uh, conference table? That won't no, work. No, it yeah. has to be on We have a stand That's for right. it. We may need to go over here for the ceiling, because it's going to be too low underneath here. It needs to be... Uh, Outstretched. Uh, yes, right. It's a nice project. Oh, isn't it? It's so very, very special. And to be able to have it here at the negotiation table, where both sides meet, is what we've dreamed of. Okay, now the American negotiations team is going to be here until Wednesday. Well, tomorrow is the last day of the round. We're tomorrow having a joint it? plenary session with the Soviets at this table at 11 o'clock tomorrow, and that will be the official closing of round four of the negotiation. So people will still be around right. for other things, but the round closes tomorrow officially. Fine. So, Ambassador Kempelman, uh, this is Mrs. Cushman. Hello, you Mrs. Cushman. Nice to see you. We're delighted to meet you. It's a pleasure this for me to be here and honor. have you all with us. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to take a look at that in a moment. Hello, I'm Robin Furnish. It's a pleasure to meet you. How do you do? How do you do? I'm Heidi Reed from Idaho. You wrote me. I did. You didn't get my letter. No. I have a copy of it here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lynn McCollum from oh, Boise. Good. Nice to see you. Now, can I take a look at this? Oh, you certainly may, Ambassador. Good. I assume the Russian says what the English says. You're absolutely right, yes. That's very beautifully done, I think. To my grandson, and this, I did this swear for him. Oh, that's wonderful. And if, um... Where is your grandson living? He's in...